Hey, it's Corey Stoker here from SkySwitch, and we're going to take a look at some new Grandstream phones today. And if you're watching this and you know me, you're probably surprised that I have Grandstream phones on my desk. I haven't necessarily been the biggest fan, but I think that is officially changing with their new product line. Uh, these are the Grandstream GRP 2612 through 2616, and totally changes the game, I think, for Grandstream. They're, in general, for my first looks at the 2616, which I have right here, I'm using as the main phone on my desk, is a really nice phone. It's well built, it's solid, the screens look great, and this is really cool how you can have this second color screen uh, go back and forth. The BLFs look great with all of that in color. Uh, we'll get a closer look on that as well. Now some big improvements for Grandstream with this series of phones over the GXP 2100 series phones in general are dual boot firmwares. This has been one of my issues with Grandstream in the past, just kind of unstable firmware from here to there. And now there's dual boot firmware. So if you run across a new firmware that has a problem, you can go back and boot from the other firmware. Another big thing, in my opinion, is we are starting to transition away from P codes. Uh, P codes are kind of difficult to work with because you can't just read the config file from scratch. I am going to show you at the end of this video some useful tips on finding P codes, either from Grandstream documentation or from the Grandstream GUI, one which you might not know of, even if you already work with Grandstream. Now these phones have Opus support. The entire line has Opus support. There are some little differences between each model of phone. I've been using this new GRP2616 for a while now, and I think it's a, a good phone. It's solid. haven't ran across any problems, especially with the latest firmware that we just got from Grandstream. And along with this, we're going to be officially announcing support for Grandstream products as far as their newer product lines. We will be supporting the GRP line officially, as well as some of the new Grandstream ATAs and PRIs, actually. They make a, a great PRI product, come to find out. Now, we've also, with their support, strengthened our support relationship with Grandstream in general. We at SkySwitch have access to personnel at Grandstream that should be able to solve any problem pretty quickly if we need it. Well, let's say there's a firmware issue or, or something like that then we can quickly escalate and get issues solved. So I'm just going to unbox these products and put them together, and then we can start to review them. I'll get some close-up screenshots of each of these phones so you can look at them up close and personal in the video, and we'll go through the GUI a little bit. Another thing that I can say about these is they are pretty customizable. Uh, I'm seeing more things in the GUI than I have with Grandstream in the past, and that's really impressive. So if you're unfamiliar with Grandstream, there's just a couple things that you have to know before getting involved with them. One is there are two types of keys on a Grandstream phone. There are virtual multipurpose keys, VMPKs, and then there are MPKs, just regular multipurpose keys. The VMPKs are the buttons that are on the side of the screen, and the MPKs are somewhat physical buttons, even though they're on the side of this screen here. In the past, they would be on like the side buttons on the phone. The other thing is with Grandstream phones, you have to have a line appearance in order to support an active call. So if you want to support two concurrent calls, you have to have two line appearances. And this may be different than other phones you've worked with if you haven't worked with Grandstream in the past. It's definitely just something to know. All right, without further ado, I'm going to try to open up these backwards so you can take a look at the whole unboxing, see what's in the box, and I'll talk about each of these phones as I go through them. So this is the GRP2612. Uh, what's important to note about this phone, first off, is there is no PoE. So we don't come across a lot of that nowadays, but there is no PoE on this phone and it will come with a power supply. There are also two versions of this phone. Uh, there's a Wi-Fi version and a non-Wi-Fi version. 
You'll find that several of these models have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in, but not the 2612 or the 2613. Now the 2612 also has a swappable faceplate so you can get branded faceplates from Grandstream. Uh, and this supports two SIP accounts and four lines total. So you can have four line appearances, meaning you can have up to four concurrent calls. Now as far as the stuff that comes in the box here, it's pretty standard. Uh, just a regular, pretty much the same ethernet cord you would find in any other box. Uh, everything looks like pretty much every other VoIP phone I've, I've already opened up. Uh, and as far as comparison, I could say that this phone looks similar or comparable to like a Yealink T41 or T42. But this is color screen, which is a little bit different. Wow, that gave me a hard time. All right. We're going to plug this in and then set it aside for a second here. My first impression, because I've read about this phone, I haven't actually unboxed or looked at this yet, is it, it actually feels really solid. The construction looks good. It looks like a really nice phone. And for the, the entry level, it's impressive. Uh, we'll see a little bit more when I plug it in, but definitely uh, Grandstream is coming a long way. And these are, again, carrier grade phones, what they call carrier grade phones, which means they're good enough for us. Uh, okay, so this is the 2613. Uh, now this is kind of like uh, uh, just one step up from the 2612, and then the 2615, I believe, is the next step up in the line. So they have a very similar look. Uh, and let me turn this box and everything around. They have a, a very similar look. We're adding uh, an extra VMPK here. And this is a six line key and three SIP account phone. Now on this one, you can do up to 24 MPKs. So, or VMPKs. So you can program 24 different buttons. And some of those are gonna be taken up by line keys but you'll basically have multiple pages like we see on every other phone these days. The 2612 can do up to 16. This one is PoE. Uh, it is not Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and I don't believe there is going to be a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi version. Uh, this one does have swappable faceplates, and it is gigabit PoE. All right, we're gonna throw the ethernet cord over there. We have plenty of them. And this does come with a power adapter, this specific one that I purchased. I'm not sure if everyone does or not. So there is 2612, 2613. Okay, now we're moving up. This is the 2614. This is the mini-me of the 2616, so it looks very similar to the 2616. Uh, not sure what's up with the naming convention on these, uh, but this Again, if we hold this up to the 2616, which is right here, they're, they're very similar. We lose a couple, or we lose, yeah, two different VMPKs there. The 2614 is a four line and four SIP account phone. Uh, it is gigabit PoE, 
It has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. Uh, you can do, I think, 16 or 24 uh, VMPKs and 24 MPKs. The one thing to note about this phone is if you're looking for the swappable faceplates, this one does not have that feature. So all of the other Grand Streams will have swappable faceplates that you can brand, but this one does not. And I'm not sure why. I think this might have been the first phone in the lineup and it was something they added later on. Um, who knows? So the box is a little bit nicer on this one. It's kind of carved out for the, the phone. And I must say that I am not familiar with the price points on these yet. I think these are going to be slightly priced above the Grand Stream GXP phones, but maybe below Polycom Yealink. Uh, we'll see about that. So again, this one has a power adapter in it. And there is the 2614. Ethernet. All right, and I'm gonna move this one off to that side. And this is the 2615. So this is kind of the, the granddaddy of this series where it doesn't have the second screen. But let's take a look. Okay, we have the same kind of box. And this, whoa, this actually looks really nice. I'm kind of shocked. And the layout of the box, usually you have all these flaps you gotta pick up for these types of phones. So they, they did a good job or better job of just layout of the product for unboxing. Now this does have a USB port. This is a 10 line key and five SIP account. You can do 40 different buttons across these 10 buttons with multiple pages. One thing that is cool about these Grand Streams that, that I noticed when I was configuring the 2616 is you're not going to lose a page button somewhere on the VMPKs. When you go over the 10 BLFs or 10 whatever, one of these soft keys becomes a dedicated page button, so you're not actually losing a key there. Another power adapter. All right. Now I've been using, again, the 2616 for a while, and this is my first time actually seeing the other models in person. They've been sitting in a box for a little while. And my overall impression, uh, just unboxing, looking at the entire lineup, is these are very solid looking phones. They're, for whatever it's worth, Grandstream has done a great job with product design. Now just some other things to mention and repeat is the dual boot firmware, it's huge. These also have a unified firmware, I'm not sure if I said that already or not, but a unified firmware. So all of these take the exact same firmware and we're not managing hundreds of different files. The one big downer to me personally, because I change phones so often, is two of these phones have a USB port. So the 2615 here has a USB port and the 2616 has a USB port, but you cannot use a USB headset at this time with it. And that's just a killer to me because I change phones so often, I just don't want to 
mess around with the EHS adapters and different plugins, different RJ9. I just want to plug a USB wire into the phone and have it automatically work. Now for either headset that I would normally be using, I could use Bluetooth with these phones. I just kind of like to use the USB connection for the actual desk phone and then Bluetooth for my cell phone. And that's probably just me. I'm picky because I change phones so often to test them out and play with them. Okay, so let's take a look at these Grand Streams up close. We're just going to look at the GRP 2616 for now. Okay, so all of the Grandstream GRP models are in Button Builder, and I just wanted to kind of show you how this works because of the two screens. You have multiple pages for the top screen, so we can go up to 24, I believe, on this uh, GRP 2616. But then if you want to populate the bottom screen, we just do that as a sidecar. When you click Add a Sidecar, it will give you the option for the virtual sidecar. Uh, which is this lower part of the screen. Uh, and then I'm using the dynamic BLF, so if my contacts change, then the BLF will change as well automatically, and I don't have to worry about uh, name changes going forward. Now, the directory is also populated, and the directory on the phone is populated based on the directory that you choose here. So in this case, I'm using my favorites directory and then just particularly choosing the people that I want to show uh, up on my BLFs. Now the trick that I wanted to show you in regards to P codes, although we're at the time where they're starting to move away from P codes, they are still in kind of like a slow migration process. And the hope is that the even the old GXP models will support this new XML language as well. And they're slowly migrating, so there's a good portion that can be done in this XML language, and the rest is still in P codes. Eventually, hopefully we'll get away from that permanently. But this is one trick that I wanted to show off, just a, a general uh, way to find P codes. Normally, I would go into their website and then go into their tools and find the Grandstream templates, download those text files, and that's how I would find P codes. But you can actually go into the developer mode in your browser. And then if you hit the click button there, you can click on the individual cell and it will show you the P code. So we know now that the BLF server is P2375, and you can do this for any uh, box here. The one part is it doesn't work for checkboxes, uh, so you can only use it for fields, but I find this is a very helpful tool for just finding P codes in general if you want to add a quick override to a phone. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to show you is if you look at the second screen, the order of the contacts, right now it's in order by first name is A, 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 and then on the right side is C, D, E. Uh, you can easily change that if you go into the menu, and I'm sure there's a P code for this, but this is more of like a user preference, so your customer may prefer this a different way. You can just change the order of the MPK LCD display order to alternating, click on save, and that will change the order so it's sequential one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So Grandstream has really done a good job in thinking about what the customer would want and what we would want as we're configuring these and putting them out. And I just want to say bravo. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped you. Subscribe and let me know your comments.